string. Pull the string! Scurly, wow, wow, wow. Backstage. Bay Area Backstage on location at the Big Wow Comic Fest. This program, we showcase Creature Features history, featuring iconic horror host, John Stanley. Can you feature that awful creature? Can you feature that ugly creature? Creature features and feature features about creatures. Creature features. Now the strangest thing about this show on two is its host, and he brings it to you. <laughs> My name's John Stanley. I hosted Creature Features at Channel 2 in Oakland from 1979 to 1984. And in all, the show ran 14 seasons, given that Bob Wilkins, uh, who started the show in 71, did it until 79 when I uh, took his place. People often uh, ask, how is it, John, that you were merely a journalist working at the San Francisco Chronicle? entertainment writer, yet you were able to take over that show. Well, Bob himself uh, had recommended me to the staff at Channel 2. I had to go have lunch with him. I guess I told enough lies at lunch they somehow thought I might be a replacement for Bob. I didn't believe it, but <clears throat> uh, they then s said, okay, come and do an audition. So I went out and uh, filmed uh, myself, or a friend of mine filmed me walking through the streets of San Francisco, going into movie theaters, coming out of movie theaters, running into the Channel 2 office, running out of it like I'm busy doing some kind of television show, and darned if uh, uh, I didn't get the role, thanks to Bob. Thanks to Bob's effort, they chose me to host the show. I guess it was primarily because I did have a background in science fiction and fantasy. I was a fan, uh, part of fandom at that time. Uh, I saw all of the new science fiction and horror movies. I was familiar with science fiction writers like Robert Block, Ray Bradbury. I had interviewed them for the San Francisco Chronicle. And so it all just came together, I guess, in an unusual kind of blend and uh, will continue for six years. What was my favorite interview during the years that I hosted Creature Features? Actually, it was one that almost never happened. Uh, Christopher Lee, the British uh, horror film star, was making a movie in the Bay Area. Uh, I'd gotten into contact with him and he had agreed to be a guest on my show. Well, uh, normally the guest shows up ahead of your taping you brief him on what we're planning to do, so he's in on all of the action. Well, for some reason, uh, Christopher Lee did not show up. Uh, he was late in arriving at the station, and I was already uh, in studio taping my opening segment, uh, which featured a number of members of a Star Wars a fan club who were dressed in the costumes of the movie, and they were uh, allegedly helping me uh, build a new set. So I had them swarming around the set carrying hammers and saws and I had background noises of hammers and so on as if we're getting ready for the new set I was going to introduce in two weeks. Hence, I was building up suspense 
I'm the, uh, hoping the audience would uh, anticipate the arrival of the new set. And so uh, in walks Christopher Lee, right in the middle of this segment. And my wife, Erica, who was acting as the producer, he walks up to her and he said, whispers to her, uh, this is all very silly, what's going on here? I really think I'm, uh, this is not my kind of show, so I'm going to leave. So he turns around and he starts to walk out the door. And just above the door is a TV monitor which carries the picture of what's being uh, taped. And I had just uh, gotten finished introducing a uh, five-minute interview that I had done with on film with Ray Bradbury. And so he saw the image of Red, Ray Bradbury talking as the interview opened. So he paused, because he knew Ray Bradbury. He paused to uh, watch the interview, which ran for five minutes. So he didn't walk out the door. He watched the entire interview. The lights came on, and my segment was finished. And he turned to my wife and said, well, if it's good enough for Ray Bradbury, I guess Creature Features is good enough for me. And he decided to stay and do the interview. Thank God uh, he was my only guest that, <laughs> that evening. And I would have had to do the show without a guest. And so uh, we did a couple of segments together and uh, everything went okay. Uh, well, what's really amazing is Creature Features didn't die. It rose from the grave. In the year 2000, uh, a fan named uh, Tom Wersch uh, came to me, came to Bob Wilkins, and talked both of us into uh, coming alive again as experts in horror and sci-fi. And uh, we started appearing at the Parkway Theater in Oakland. Uh, we started attending the WonderCon at the San Francisco Convention Center. And we did all kinds of uh, special shows at the Castro Theater. Uh, over the years. In fact, we had about seven years that Bob and I kept the franchise alive on a whole new level by making personal appearances, uh, by having uh, at first VHS tapes, which later became DVDs of our shows with new material, old material mixed together. Uh, I did a book called I Was a TV Horror Host. Uh, which told the story from my point of view in book form. Uh, Tom Wersch uh, made a documentary, Watch Horror Films, Keep America Strong, which had been Bob Wilkins' uh, motto for his many years. And uh, suddenly there we were again uh, in all kinds of format, live format, printed format, and uh, DVD format <laughs> as it finally ended up. And we were alive again. We were alive for all of those years. Uh, we're going to screen uh, a motion picture I wrote, produced, and directed uh, back in the 70s called Nightmare in Blood. Uh, it, was, it was one of those uh, experimental ideas that uh, Ken Davis, my partner, and I had uh, in the uh, 70s. We were heavily influenced by fandom by all the new conventions, these Star, Star Trek and Star Wars events and so on. And so we thought we'd make a movie built around a horror convention. Uh, we got to uh, shoot the film at the Fox Theater in downtown Oakland. So we had a real large, beautiful theater for our setting. And uh, the plot was, uh, there's going to be a horror convention and the guest of honor is going to be a film actor who specializes in vampire movies. His uh, theater name is Malachi, his marquee name. And it turns out that Malachi and his two uh, PR agents, uh, once they settle into the theater, it turns out that Malachi is indeed a vampire and his two henchmen are Burke and Hare, <laughs> the original killers from history. Uh, and the three of them are plotting to kill off various members of the committee that has formed the uh, horror convention. It took uh, Ken Davis and I uh, a good five years to get the film shot and in theaters. It wasn't an easy process. 
Uh, we went through sheer hell at times, but we kept. But somehow we were able to keep the spirit of the film alive. We didn't let go of the idea that we had to complete it and we had to get it into the theaters, uh, which despite all the setbacks that we underwent, finally came true and it played in theaters for two years. It went back and forth, uh, first run, second run, third run, fourth run, played in uh, drive-in theaters, uh, old, old movie houses uh, for almost two and a half years. Then it went to a VHS format, and then finally in 2004, I was able to get a, a very nice, uh, beautiful uh, widescreen copy made for uh, Image Entertainment, and they released it on DVD. So although it was, uh, difficult, it was a difficult project to complete, we did complete it. It did successfully run in movie theaters, whatever you may otherwise think about the film. I'm often asked what is my personal favorite horror film and uh, it will always remain the one of the first sci-fi horror films that I saw. I was 11 years old. They didn't make a lot of uh, films like that in the 1940s. The trends had changed and uh, because of the UFO sightings and alien life form units being found, uh, suddenly science fiction rose up. And The Thing from Another World was a film that, uh, Howard Hawks, 1951 film, that uh, was really the very first science fiction film of its kind with horror overtones. Uh, just scared the hell out of me. I never forgot it, and it really opened the door, helped to open the door to a further explanation and exploration of what is science fiction, what is horror all about, and led me to discover pulp magazines, like Fantastic Adventures, Planet Stories, to discover the works of Robert Block and Ray Bradbury and so many other wonderful uh, writers of that period. Uh, so, so the thing from another world, the Howard Hawks version, will always be my personal favorite. There was another incident, a very unusual incident, where Leonard Nimoy was doing a one-man play in San Francisco uh, called Theo. It was about the brother of uh, Vincent Van Gogh, the painter. And so uh, he pulled up to the front of the TV station in a limousine and he saw a small crowd of fans out front that had gathered. The word got out that N uh, Nimoy was going to be my guest. And those who knew my taping time were all there. And he saw someone in the crowd he didn't like. She was apparently coming to every performance at the theater down in San Francisco and uh, bugging him. She was always uh, uh, whispering or looking at him from the stage, bothering him. So he drove around to the back, uh, found my wife, uh, told her, uh, unless you get rid of that woman out in the front, I'm not going to do the show. So she rushes to tell me this. I rushed outside and I had to t unfortunately tell the fan it was about eight or ten fans that had gathered there. I'm sorry, but you can't come into the uh, studio. Uh, they have provi prohibited that. Uh, we can't do it. So everybody left. The woman, uh, the woman left. And uh, once he, uh, Leonard Nimoy knew the woman wasn't out front, he agreed to do the show. <laughs> and it's a good thing he did because I had the entire program uh, geared for him. He was in all of the segments. I had all kinds of material about Vincent Van Gogh. I had a special music uh, pictorial se segment. Uh, without him, I would have had a hell of a night to fill and complete that show. Well, well, the concept of the horror host uh, w was created for syndicated television, which of course died away with the coming of cable television. Uh, you no longer had packages of film that were being sold uh, to individual stations. The movies were now going uh, to the various channels depending on the theme. You know, there was a Western channel, there was a sci-fi channel. Uh, everything became uh, uh, theme-oriented. Uh, so the concept of having a horror host to introduce a package of movies eventually was to die away. Uh, nowadays, we, we seem to find uh, some horror hosts 
who still uh, somehow work their way into various elements of the cable television uh, market. But the kind of show d d done uh, with, the, with the quality of films that uh, we had back in the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s no longer exists. And so now it's, um, it's rather difficult to put together a package that, that works in today's world. Well, ever since Bob Wilkins and I in, uh, came back in the year 2000, uh, we have uh, been bringing together uh, a series of uh, originally VHS tapes, which are now DVDs. And these uh, things are, m uh, most of them are available. Uh, I have a website, uh, stanleybooks.net, uh, on which you can get not only a history of creature features, uh, you, have, you can see a list of all of the uh, people I interviewed when I was at the Chronicle. You can buy uh, many of my DVDs. I have two brand new DVDs just coming on the market. Uh, one is called John Stanley on the Loose, which features many segments from my shows never before uh, put on DVD. They're all brand new. And I also have a, a DVD uh, of things I did after leaving Creature Features. Uh, my reputation seemed to follow me and I was asked, for example, to host a six-hour Godzilla festival at Channel 36 right here in San Jose. So there's 43 minutes of me interviewing Godzilla and showing, <laughs> showing clips from all of the uh, Japanese horror and sci-fi films of that, of that period. I also have a book called I Was a TV Horror Host, uh, which is m the, m uh, the written history uh, of what I went through to do the Creature Feature show, plus interviews with some of the great sci-fi icons, the Star Wars cast, uh, the Star Trek uh, people like Gene Roddenberry, Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner. Uh, it's all into one book, I Was a TV Horror Host. Uh, there's still some copies left and uh, going to stanleybooks.net. Uh, fan, you, you fans out there just might find something you like. Well, it's been fun to be on Bay Area Backstage. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this little piece of creature feature uh, history. It's been a lot of fun for me, and I never dreamed that uh, after the show was canceled in 1984 that we would ever have an opportunity to live again. We have risen from the dead, as I like to say. Creature Features is alive again. And Bob Wilkins and I had a wonderful seven to eight years uh, before his death in uh, 2009. So uh, I hope you will remember my website, uh, stanleybooks.net, and you will uh, stay tuned to what's going on here in the Bay Area.
Intruder alert, intruder alert. Yo, uh, uh, intruder might not escape.